tonight from U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Stadium. They were bundled up, jackets and scarves, downright cold outside on this November evening. But all good here inside as we welcome you to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Tonight we've got a great Sunday night matchup on tap as it'll be the Chicago Bears taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Joseph now ready to get this one started and we are underway from Minneapolis. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. So here come the Bears to take over on offense behind their third year quarterback, former Ohio State Buckeye Charles, Justin Fields. We all knew Fields was an incredible athlete coming out of college, and last season, he unleashed it upon the NFL. Ran for over 1,100 yards and would have broken the quarterback's single-season record if he had played the full season. He also threw 17 touchdown passes, and that's the next jump for him. More consistency as a passer. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit. We decided not to throw it on first down, but give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage, but it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Second down and a little more than a yard here. Here's Travis Homer, the former Miami Hurricane. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40 yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. A man who led the league in yards per carry last year, it's Khalil Herbert. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Give him three on the screen. He couldn't break free, and it's third down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Third down and six. Now, nowhere for Fields to turn, and down he goes. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. The 
fourth down, so they send out Trenton Gill. Brandon Powell deep for Minnesota. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And leading them out, a player who turned a memorable debut into now a six-year NFL career out of Southern Miss, Nick Mullins. Brandon, I know he isn't at the status of some of the elite names in this league, but I do know he's an absolute fighter because he's heard all the criticisms. He's read the articles that say he isn't good enough to be the starter, and he absolutely does not care. All he wants to do is prove every doubter wrong and show that he belongs in this spot. Just a gain of a couple there, and it'll be second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught and you don't give up much run after the catch. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on to punt for Minnesota. We'll call it a 42-yard punt, three on the return. And the Bears take over. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. The last series form, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 38. Here's Fields. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. This early in the game, it's all about making steady progress downfield, hoping to lead to early points. And you can do it with your actual play calls or sometimes something a little more improvised as we just saw there. On second down, a run with Herbert. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs, and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Going on the ground with Homer. And he'll get what he can up the middle, three yards, and that'll bring up second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. They'll come up second and seven. Herbert powering up the middle. 
And it's still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. A shotgun snap, Fields work in the middle of the field and he's got a man complete. And this is gonna turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 24 yard line. No score after one on EA Sports. They'll run this with Homer. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Travis Homer, 24 yards. And the Bears post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Well, we had the scoreless first quarter of play. We sure didn't have to wait long into the second quarter to get some action on the scoreboard. So was the first quarter a feeling out process? I mean, that was an interesting quarter, wasn't it? Because we had some action. We had some good play. Just didn't have any points. So now it's game on. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. And he's got it to make it 7 0 in favor of the Bears. So the drive there took six plays. And the last play, a really nice run that culminated in the touchdown. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Yeah, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> Tremaine Edmonds there to bring him down. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Second and nine. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. This one brought in by Jefferson. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 17 yards, first down, Vikings. Here's a jet sweep. This is Addison. And this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. 
but if not. Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Here's Madison running left. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. Gain of just one. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. Yannick Ngakwe. In there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and they just locked people down. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the seven yard line. I absolutely love the flexibility of these punters. Their leg drive, able to get it way up in the air. And that allows their punt team to get down there and down it inside the 10 because they've had some time. Now the Bears offense ready to take over again. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. 23 yards on the play. Well, they were backed up to start the drive, but how about that aggressiveness? Firing it downfield right away. Nice job there getting out towards what would have been their normal starting position. So first and 10 now from the 30. A give left side here for Herbert. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Ball on the 36 now. Here's second and four. Fields now to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Moore. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Seven yards there and a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Fields throw complete here to commit. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it's second down. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Second and five. To throw his fields. And he'll get it down here to the 43. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Right. 
Back to throw. Fields throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. They run with a former Panther. It's Deontay Foreman. And he gets this only to the 44-yard line. Not near enough to keep the drive alive. Now here's Trenton Gill now. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. Yeah, call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Into the hands of the rookie Jordan Addison. And brought down, but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Any questions of how they'd approach this drive were answered right there. They come out throwing, and they get a nice pickup here toward the end of the first half. First down now, but that clock rolling. They'll set up to throw. Looking for Addison again, and he's got him again. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. A gain of eight there on the play, and it'll be second in a couple. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Over the middle and complete to Addison. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Back to throw again. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Another good completion on the drive as the Vikings have a first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. And that nearly intercepted. Oh, the free safety roaming into position almost had it, but it's second down. Well, sometimes those cliches really come true, don't they, when they talk about it takes all 11 to play good defense. We've seen that in this ball game. I think the secondary has to be singled out, though. They are in the presence of every receiver whenever the ball's thrown, and this one they help force another incompletion. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. This one incomplete. Almost picked off by the rookie, but he couldn't quite look it in. And now it's fourth down. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. The Bears going to get one more possession in this first half. 
And they may be content to take this 7-0 lead into the locker room. We'll see. Clock at 20 seconds to go in the half as they come up first and 10. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Stop made there by Brian Asamoah. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been a hard-fought battle to this point. 7-0 is the score, with neither offense really able to get on track. But let's not waste any time. We'll get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the second half. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Just the one touchdown in that first half. 7-0 our score as we get going in quarter number three. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. Now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. It's been a tight game to this point. What do they need to do, Charles, to break through in the second half and take the lead? Well, I think the first thing they need to do is thank their defense for keeping them in this game. And you know what I think the defense is saying back to them? Why don't you guys focus on getting some first downs, putting some drives together, give us a little bit of a break here. If we can get some rest, we'll play even better for you. And oh, by the way, pay off a few of those drives with some points too. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Now, that's a run that warms a play caller's heart because you're actually set up to do whatever you want on offense. You can come right back and run essentially the same play because you have momentum, or you can fake that running play and throw something deep over the top, or you now feel like you have an extra down to play with because if you go ahead and just throw it and you don't get it, come back and try and pick it up on third down. And Hawkinson going to have the Vikings first down as he'll get this up to the 43. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch at its second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Here's a second and five. They'll go Madison up the middle. And he's got it across midfield and into Bear territory. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. A yard all they need, but it's third down. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down.
Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Going to run with Madison again. And he works his way forward to pick up four yards there, second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. At this point in the game, in the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps and soon. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. He'll drop to throw. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. On the handoff, it's Madison. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Here's a give to Madison running right. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. The 22 is the line to gain here on third down. He'll look to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have the Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. You want to put together a long drive? You've got to be able to convert on third down, and they've done exactly that on this one. Sure enough, came up with another conversion right there. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Running from the shotgun with Madison. And a couple of yards as they move it from the 21 to the 19. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the case on that play. Second and eight coming from the 19. They'll set up a throw. Justin Jefferson bringing in the slam. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Alexander Madison, an eight-yard touchdown run. 
And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this game here in the fourth. And we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. And it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. This one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 24. Able to push his way through. And Fields going to have the first down before sliding to a halt to avoid the contact. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. From here on, any score could be the winning one, and he is certainly aware of that. Look at the way he locked in on that marker and made a mad scramble to get to it for the first down. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start. Here's another first and 10. Now Fields. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion for us there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. So line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. Herbert now on the option. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. But this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and ten. Nice run on second and ten when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right. Fields hit, and the ball is loose. And this belongs to the Vikings. Well, so much for the four-minute offense. They were trying to reduce the clock, get in position to win the game, and leave no time for them to come back and catch them. And guess what? They turned the yeah, ball over. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, they had it all set up for themselves, and they let it get away. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And the fumble recovery certainly has put them in the driver's seat. First and ten, all tied here in the fourth. Addison will go in motion left. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. What a way to start a drive. An excellent run, a tone setter. And now, if you want to take a shot on second down and go play action and make it look like the same exact play and throw it over the top, you can do so because you've established the run in a big way. And he'll go down. The 
Bears get there for the sack. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. The last run went so well for them. Maybe they should have just handed it off right here, too. Instead, the quarterback ends up keeping, and the defense is right on it and wipes away the yardage gained on the last snap. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. Now back to throw. Now he's forced out left. Oh, no, he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Bears. There he goes, right side. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. A disappointing end of the sequence there. He was starting to turn nothing into something, and then he lost the football. And sometimes things get lost in the transition. And what I mean by that is you go from being a passer to a runner. And at a certain point, once you cross the line of scrimmage, you're strictly a runner now. There's no more downfield threat. Make sure you take care of the football while you're traversing downfield. Mooney, the motion man right. And he'll get it here on the jet sweep. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Just need a yard here, second and one. Hand off right side for Herbert. And he gets it down to the 32. Able to get the one yard he needed, but nothing more. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. They'll go again with Herbert. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a score to break this tie. They come up now on second and two. A handoff for Herbert. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Khalil Herbert taking it in from 24 yards out. And the Bears have broken our tie and have taken a fourth quarter lead. Hey, that score deserves our respect, deserves our excitement. But I'm looking at the clock, and I'm thinking, there's a long way to go in this one. Ideally, they would have liked to milk a little bit more time off. Now on the other sideline, you start to get the crew together and say, this is what we practiced the two-minute drill for, right? Yeah, you hope you've been in that situation before, and if you haven't, you just have the confidence. Hey, let's go down there and get this thing done. But boy, that's a big score right there to give them the advantage. They do tack on the extra point as well, and that makes the score 14 to 7. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. This taken in right around the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. So all eyes on this Vikings offense. Down by seven. 
A minute 51 on the clock. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and 10. He's back to throw. Now he'll escape to his left. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. But Charles, they're trying to protect this lead late. Those are the types of mistakes they could afford to go without. But the last thing you want to give them is help in completing a comeback, which is exactly what that penalty does. They'll come up first and 10 here. Back to throw. They'll find Osborne here. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. Now you're right on the edge of field goal range. You've still got time, but get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and 10 now. Now well, a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. It's so close. He gets it to the one. Out of bounds right there. Now that is the two-minute drill at its very best. Get the completion, get a big chunk of yardage, and then get out of bounds to save those timeouts. You cannot do it any better than that. Here's first and goal. Madison is in. Touchdown, Minnesota. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the post, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch. Tomorrow. Joseph now to have the PAT. And no sweat. He puts it through. And we are tied here in the fourth. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. setting up for a great finish all tied in the fourth as the kicks away now Jones Jones now on the return and he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21 yard line the Chicago offense set to get started well partner here it is they've got the chance to win the game you'd have to think they need to get it near the opposite 40 to have a chance to kick a game winning field goal we'll see what they can do and you're right about that because if we look at it in macro that's what it looks like but i think in micro the head coach has already asked the special teams coach what is he feeling what does he think where does he want the football what's the yard line we have to get and he's already relayed that to his quarterback and his offense they know what the goal is now the key can they get there that was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. It just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. Here comes second down at five. Now Fields gets this to Moore. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. All three timeouts still at their disposal. Here's first and 10 now. Back to throw, Fields. 
Oh, look at the juke. And he'll be taken down as that'll net him only about a gain of nine. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this fourth quarter. Here's second and a yard. Here's Fields. Looking for the out route, and he's got more. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Here's first down. Here's a give to Herbert. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. And now they're going to get the timeout. A huge play has him in field goal range with a chance to win. So here's Cairo Santos on the field goal try. Two seconds on the clock, this for the win. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. And now this game's going to come down to the right leg of their kicker. His first attempt of the night here, and it's a big one. It's for the win. And it is good. He splits the uprights on the chip shot. And they've come in here and stolen one on the road. What a finish in this one, Charles. You know, this group, they come in, they have to fight a hostile atmosphere every snap. They get the late score. They get the victory. And that flight home, it's going to be a little sweeter after this one. And Brandon, just like you, I was fired up for that last sequence. How about that? Wouldn't you have loved to have been in the huddle when they were mounting that game-winning drive? Big-time moment. No one shied away from it. They tuned out the crowd, kept their heads, and executed the way they needed to to earn that win. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. From Minneapolis, good night, everybody.